Hi everyone, this is Guest Welder's newest edition, the YWM211P. I am going to show you everything about this machine, and I mean everything. We will go over what comes in the box, what other parts are available for this machine, how to get the machine set up and started out of the box, and then we are going to go into the settings explaining literally everything. This will be a little bit of a longer video, but I do not want to skip anything, so let's jump right in and get started. So with the welding machine, the things that come with it are, of course, the machine itself. You have your standard MIG gun with the Euro Connect style on it. This MIG gun also has a removable liner. You just take this nut off, you can take out the steel liner and replace it with this graphene liner that is included. This graphene liner would be for aluminum or other soft filler metals. Also comes with its own gas hose, its own ground clamp, electrode holder for stick welding, 220 to 110 adapter, an assortment of guide holders that will get you anywhere from 0.23 to a 0.45 wire. Uh, you got U neural groove, V neural groove, and W neural groove, which you will go over. Contact, tip, contact tips to match, and a wrench to get your tips on and off. So there are a few things that you will need to get that are not included. You would have to get a regulator that is purchased separately. You would obviously have to get your own gas bottle as well. And because this machine is a pulse welder and it's really good at aluminum welding, I would highly recommend getting this. This is a spool gun for aluminum wire. This makes welding with aluminum really smooth and really easy and functions really well paired up with the YWM211P and the pulse settings. The other thing that you can get, since this is a multi-process machine, it'll also do Lift Arc TIG is the TIG torch that is sold separately on Yeswater's website as well. This is a 17 style 17 TIG torch. There's the connector for it. And this is a manual gas valve. The TIG torch also comes with a couple gas lenses and nozzles as well. To get this machine set up for GMAW, first thing we should do is add our shielding gas. You should do your research to decide what gas you will need to use. There are many options and they all have different effect on your welding. So we first install the regulator onto the bottle. Then thread on the hose to the outlet side of the regulator. Then on the back side of this machine, there is a fitting to thread in the hose, but make sure you use a backup wrench to hold the fitting onto the machine. Too much torque on this and it could snap off. Now before we install our spool of wire, we need to choose the right guide wheel. The V neural groove wheel is for flux cord wire, the U groove wheel is for aluminum and other soft wires, and the W neural groove is for solid wire. Always match the correct size wheel to the size of your wire. Installing the wheel is nice and easy. Open up the side panel. Pull this handle down. Let the flat wheel spring up out of your way. Undo this hand nut here. And install your wheel facing the right direction with the correct size facing in. You also need to line up the slot on the wheel with the key and then snug up the hand nut. Now you can add in filler wire of choice. Undo the retention nut that is reverse threaded. Install your filler wire so that the end of the wire is on the bottom and it'll spin counterclockwise. And also make sure the alignment pin goes in the hole of the spool here.
cut the wire down behind any bends, keeping the tension on the spool so it doesn't bird's nest. And with the guide wheel unlocked, thread in the wire past the guide wheel and back through the sleeve. Pull the guide wheel back down and tighten up the adjustment knob with enough pressure so that the guide wheel doesn't slip on the filler wire. Now install the MIG gun by aligning the Euro Connect and hand tighten the nut. Take off the contact tip before feeding the wire through. Now turn on the welder and push down on the right knob to feed the wire through the gun liner. Once the filler wire comes out of the gun, stop the feed and install the contact tip and nozzle. Cut the excess off. Now before you get to welding, make sure your gas is adjusted properly. To do this, make sure your bottle is on and push down on the left knob to check your gas flow. This gives you about 10 seconds of gas flow to adjust your CFH on your regulator. I recommend starting at around 20 to 30 CFH and you can change it as you weld to get to your liking. If you want to connect the spool gun, it is just as easy as connecting the MIG gun. Simply thread on the Euro Connect and also thread on the two prong trigger controller. Don't forget to flip the switch inside the panel when using the spool gun. So now let's jump into these settings. There's a lot to cover here. This YWM211P is a multi process machine. It is capable of the three most popular weld processes, GMAW, SMAW, and GTAW with a lift arc. This machine is optimized for pulse welding. Pulse MIG is different from the MIG styles you may be used to. What the single pulse settings do is reciprocate between a high current and a low current at a frequency of about 150 to 400 hertz depending on how high you have your amperage set. What that does is it breaks up any oxides that are left on the base material while also creating this fast freeze style puddle. Now what a fast freeze puddle does is it makes the puddle less, uh, less watery. And as you intently move away from the puddle utilizing a stepping or whipping motion of sorts, it freezes where it's at so you can leave a weld that resembles a nice stack of dimes. At least to a certain extent. Now the double pulse settings kind of added an extra layer to that. It aids in you being able to time your steps or whips while also keeping the excess amount of heat out of the material to minimize warpage and minimize oxidization post welding. Now that'll be an interval that you choose. It'll look somewhat similar to this if we were to graph both together. In order to do pulse welding, make sure the pulse MIG function is illuminated on the left column right here. Now out of the box, the pulse settings may not be optimized for you. So as I go through all these settings, I'll show you some settings that work for me in order to get you started. And you can adjust your liking as you practice. Now included with the welder is a table for reference that can help you get started, at least with the voltage and wire speed setting. Now this column here, is all your trigger settings. This is 2T, 4T, 4TL, and a spot time. For 2T, the trigger is the most basic setting, something that everybody's familiar with. You hold the trigger down to weld and let go to stop. The 4T setting turns the trigger into an on-off switch. Click it once to start to weld and click it again to stop. Now when you pull the trigger to stop welding, it'll lower the amperage slowly and then stop. Now all the slope settings for this 4T trigger are adjustable and we'll go over them here in a little bit. The next setting here is the 4TL trigger. 4TL mode is similar to 4T mode, but with another added feature. Pull the trigger and hold it to start. 
and you start to run at a beginning amperage, which is also adjustable on the set. Once you let go of the trigger, it will gradually increase amperage to the welding amperage you select. Once you are ready to stop, pull the trigger and hold it. The amperage will gradually decrease to your finishing amperage and stay there until you let go of the trigger. Once you let go, the arc stops. Now this last setting is for spot. You can go into your settings and set a time for your spot. For this, you pull the trigger and the arc will start. Once the time is up, the amperage will gradually decrease and stop the arc. You can select the time anywhere from 0 to 15 seconds for your spot time. And also, as a side note, the spot timer is only available in the standard MIG mode. It is not available for any of the pulse MIG. This next column here is all your wire diameter. It is important to know that the .045 is only available for aluminum. Make sure you select the correct diameter you are using. Next column here is all your menu options. This is where all your pulse settings, spot timer settings, and trigger settings will be hiding. Let's go through this and explain what all this is. So we'll hit the venue once, and it gives you the option to turn your double pulse on or off. And for now, we'll just turn it on. Now that it's on, we can click this menu button twice, and it pulls up your double pulse settings. The first setting is for your double pulse amper. The top number is automatically set according to your initial settings in the home screen. The bottom number is the one you can change. That is your secondary amperage setting, which is the amperage the double pulse goes to in the lower current. The next option is your frequency. This adjusts how many pulses there will be. This number is in hertz, so this number represents how many pulses per second. You can set it really slow. or really quick. Which can be anywhere between zero and five hertz. This third setting that says DUI is your duty cycle. This is how long your individual pulses are. To get you started, here are some settings that I use for welding quarter inch and thicker mild steel with mixed gas. So I have all mine saved on channel 3. This is what I have normally set, 165 and 80. Sometimes I'll turn it as low as 65. My frequency for welding quarter inch is somewhere about 0.8 to 1.2, somewhere in that general area. My duty cycle I leave low. Mine is 35 to 40 percent. That keeps it so my hot, my high amperage stays high longer than my little amperage stays in. Now once you click your button, menu button three times, you get into the weld settings. This is where you fine tune how your arc and puddle behaves versus your inductance. This is a lot like arc control on a stick glove. The more inductance you have, the stronger and more fierce the arc seems to act. The cone of the arc narrows up and gives a bit, it gives a real crisp strong arc Whereas when the inductance is turned down, it widens out the cone and tames the puddle down and it acts a little smoother. You will find the settings you like with some practice. Now second in this set of settings is RN, we call a run-in speed. This setting is one you can set to give the wire feeder a little boost in wire speed for the initial startup to prevent the wire from burning back and start. Next is your hot start. Your hot start is exactly what it sounds like and typically helps burn back the first part of the wire to help mainly minimize porosity. I personally leave this low or even sometimes off in pulse mode. Next up is your pre gas and your post gas. Your pre gas tells you how, many, how much time in seconds the gas starts before your arc starts and the, and the post gas is how much gas how long the gas stays on after you stop the arc. Next is your burn back timer. What this does, after you stop the arc, the wire feed stops and the arc continues for just a very short amount of time in order to minimize the falling you tend to get on the end of the wire so you don't have to snip the end after you've stopped. It's a very handy feature when set up right. So here are the settings that I saved for a quarter inch of thicker steel. Again, just to give you an idea of where to start. 
and you can adjust them to your liking. So I usually keep my induction, it's actually usually at about a two. My run-in speed, I keep at three. Hot start, I actually usually keep that off unless I really think I need it. Pre-gas, I'll set to about half a second, and then post-gas, I'll also set to about 0.8 seconds or so. And then my burn back timer, I keep it at a two. That seems to be a good amount for me to keep that balling. So that is all the fine details that I wanted to go over for this machine. I hope that helps you get started in the world of Pulse Meg. Stay tuned for more videos like this and some builds coming up along the way. I'll see you always later.